Hi everyone and we are back today with some basic analysis of business transactions for fundamentals of accounting. The reference that we are using is Financial and Managerial Accounting by Kimmel Weigand and Kiesu. We're using chapter one for this particular area and we are today we're going to be working on problem 1-2b. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with our accounting and finance material and comment below if you need help with any additional resources. So the question that we're looking at right now says Mandy Arnold opened a law office, Mandy Arnold Attorney Law, on July 1st, 2014. On July 31st, the balance sheet showed certain balances. Now, right from the get-go, you can see that we already have balances under these accounts. So the first thing that we're going to do is enter those. So cash had a balance of $4,000. Um, I just want to make sure that we get the right uh, sort of formatting over here. So I'm going to make sure that we're on the accounting format. So our positives and our negatives are in line, representing our cash inflows and outflows. So we have a balance of 4000 in cash. We have accounts receivable worth $1,500. We have supplies worth $500, equipment worth $5,000, accounts payable of $4,200, and common stock worth $6,000. And retained earnings of $800. Now that retained earnings, I'm just going to go ahead and put into a note up here for $800 because that's our beginning retained earnings. Uh, during August, the following transactions occurred. So... Uh, number one now this is where we do our standard transactions entry and we're going to be able to go ahead and carry out all of these transactions so there are eight transactions over here and we are going to make sure that we are covered for all eight and then the instructions specify that we have to prepare a tabular analysis of the August transactions beginning with the July 31st balances. We've already counted for those balances in our transactions table. The column headings should be as follows. We've already got the setup. And prepare an income statement for August, a retained earnings statement for August, and a balance sheet at August 31st. We're going to do that at the very end after our transactions table is done. So now that these basic balances are in, we're going to go ahead and get started with each individual serial entry. Okay. All right. So, a uh, number one. Okay. Collected fourteen hundred dollars of accounts receivable due from from clients. So, because we've already collected them, that represents an inflow of cash and an outflow from accounts receivable, or an increase in cash and a decrease in your accounts receivable. And number two says we paid two thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, just one moment. Just we want to make sure that we can see all of the accounts that we are talking about because it'll become very confusing if we can't see all of their headings. There we go. Okay, so number two says we paid $2,700 cash for accounts payable due. We paid the cash, that's a decrease in the cash of $2,700, and we paid it against an account payable. So that's technically a decrease in the liability by the same amount. Number three says we earned revenue of $7,900, so that's an increase in the revenue account, of which $3,000 is collected in cash, that's an increase in our cash account by $3,000, and uh, the balance is due in September, so that means that we are owed $4,900 in our accounts receivable. Then um, number four says that we purchased additional office equipment for $1,000. So office equipment gets an increase of 1000 Paying 400 in cash, so we'll decrease our cash count by 400 And the balance on accounts, so our liability, our accounts payable, has increased by $600. Because that's the difference that we continue to owe on the equipment. For transaction number five, we paid salaries of $3,000. So that means we have a negative of $3,000 in our salaries. We have our rent. I'm going to go ahead and insert a couple of lines over here. Um, just to sort of make our lives a little bit easier. Because we want to enter multiple cash and expense amounts over here. So we'll just do negative $3,000. Um, and this will be recorded against an expense and that specific expense is salary. So under notes, we'll put in salaries and wages expense. 
and the second is paying for uh, sorry uh, rent for August of nine hundred dollars we've also paid nine hundred dollars in rent and that'll be negative nine hundred in our expenses this is our rent expense and the last point in the same question is advertising expenses of 350 so minus 350 in our expense minus 350 in our cash it's decreasing our cash account and specifically for advertising expense so you'll see in our notes we're tracking what sort of expenses we're spending our money on or what sort of expenses we owe money on Number six says we declared and paid a $450 cash dividend. That will decrease our cash count by $450 and it will be recorded in our dividends. And remember, revenue will always be positive, expenses will always be negative, and dividends will always be negative whenever we work with the transactions table. For transaction number seven, we received $2,000 from federal from standard federal bank the money was borrowed on a four month note payable now technically speaking we have to add another liability account over here and that is specifically a notes payable account notes payable is slightly longer than your standard accounts payable and it always represents the um influx of money so your notes payable or your liability has increased by two thousand dollars and Therefore, your cash has increased by $2,000. And lastly, you've incurred utilities expense for the month on account for $210. That basically means that your liability has increased by $210 and an expense has been noted for $210 specifically for utilities expense. All right. Now, um, as always with a transaction table, because we understand the basic entries here, we're just going to go ahead and um, complete our tabular analysis over here, making sure that the accounting equation balances on both sides. So we get the totals of all the accounts and then we'll move forward to creating our um, financial statement. So let's go ahead and expand the size over here. OK, so let's go ahead and calculate our totals for each account okay and remember to keep in mind to remember to incorporate the basic balance that we began with that's very very tricky sometimes people forget that as they are working on their tabular analysis and uh, remember that we want our total assets to be equal to our liabilities plus our equity so these are all of our assets over here and now let's go ahead and take the sum of our liabilities and our equities okay um, now this is a little bit tricky because I also have one more number to account for over here and that is the positive 800 from my retained earnings that I noted up there okay just make sure that you've accounted for that and you'll see both sides are balancing that means that we've done our work correctly now uh, just real quick we want to be able to create our income statement and our balance sheet and our statement for retained earnings this is always done in a specific order so first and foremost we're going to go ahead and create our income statement and the income statement Statement is always for the period um, ending a specific date and time right so we're gonna go ahead and open up the question the question states for August okay so for the period ending August 31st um, and in this particular case the income statement is always made taking your revenues and deducting your expenses okay so we're gonna take our revenues Our revenue is a positive over here that is a positive seven thousand nine hundred and then we're gonna deduct all of our expenses and remember in the income statement it's very important to specify exactly which expense we're talking about so if we take a look over here in our notes we've identified all of our expenses so I'm just gonna go ahead and put in uh, salary and wages expense oh sorry my bad I accidentally entered an equal sign there okay and then we'll have a rent expense I'm just gonna go ahead and list all of my expenses over here then we have an advertising expense and then we have a utilities expense okay so now we want to put in all of the corresponding numbers with that right so our salaries expense was for three thousand dollars our rent expense was for nine hundred dollars our advertising expense was for three hundred and fifty dollars and our utilities expenses for two hundred and ten dollars so that means that basically we can calculate a total expenses over here and we'll take the sum 
of all of our expenses. Our total expenses equal to 4,460. And once we have our revenues and we have our expenses, we'll be able to calculate our net income. If the net income is a positive, that represents a profit. If it's a negative, it represents a loss. It also means that our revenue is greater than our expenses in the situation of a profit or our revenue is less than our expenses in the situation of a loss. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the revenue minus all of our expenses and we get a positive 3440 and that represents our net income for the period ending August 31st and that we're done with the first financial statement right there for part B the second statement that you must make is the statement of changes in retained earnings and the statement of changes in retained earnings is a simple four point balance uh, is a four point financial statement so we start off with our retained earnings for the beginning of the time period. I always like to specify beginning because, you know, the dates can change, time periods can change. So whatever time period we're talking about, we're talking about the beginning in this particular case. To that, we always want to add into it our net income, and then we want to subtract or deduct from it our uh, dividends that have been paid, and that will give us our retained earnings for the ending of that particular time period. Now, in this case, the beginning of our time period represents um, the 31st, uh, sorry, uh, just a moment, going referencing back to our question over here, we are talking about the entire month of August. So on July 31st, we've got a specific balance there. So um, in this case, the beginning represents the 30, 31st of July, and the ending will represent the 31st of August. Okay. Uh, so keeping all of this in mind, whoops misspelled july right there right okay let's go ahead and correct that okay so the numbers that we're looking at specifically if we look back at our transactions table and against our retained earnings we noted an 800 dollars there so our beginning uh retained earnings were 800 dollars oh my goodness i'm so sorry i apologize there are so many uh errors over here small spelling errors okay there we go so statement of changes in retained earnings is corrected uh, retained earnings for beginning for 31st of july is corrected and then we want to correct the spelling of income over here my apologies so when we add into it our net income if you see we've already calculated our net income which is 3440 and from it we want to deduct our dividends and if you see our dividends come in over here at 450 and that will allow us to calculate the sum of our um uh, our, our total sum which is our retained earnings okay now uh what's very tricky over here is we have to make sure that we've got a negative okay uh against the against our uh dividends okay um i have a feeling this is not being picked up over here and that is sort of bugging me just give me one moment so let's go ahead and uh put in the number in fact let me go ahead and put in negative 450 over here there we go so you see it changes our number significantly okay so we have a total retained earnings of 3790 and now let's move forward and create our balance sheet i want to create the balance sheet a little further down over here now the balance sheet is a snapshot at any point in time which means this will be as of 31st of august so on this particular date and this particular time what did we possess and what where was it placed okay and remember that this situation can change at any point in time what we are saying is at this point in time this is what our company looked like so we will start off with our assets and we will um sum up all of the assets that we have so we've got our cash of, um, we come back over here to our totals, $2,600, cash for $2,600. And then we have our accounts receivable, just on a moment, for $5,000. We have supplies for $500. And we have equipment for $6,000. All right, that means that our grand total for the sum of our assets, and this is the exact amount we're going to cross-check against, for our liabilities and our equity comes down to $14,100. We just want to put in a heading up here that says that these are our assets. Now, let's put in our liabilities over here. And our liabilities, we only have two accounts for our liabilities. We can see them right here, accounts payable and notes payable. And 
once we take some of that we'll get our total liabilities oops abilities. there we go uh, so our accounts payable balance shows 2310 so 2310 our notes payable balance shows two thousand dollars that gives us total liabilities worth 4310 there we go we're gonna hold on to that number right there okay and we're going to note down our equity and our equity includes sorry let's put that in caps over there so our equity includes our common stock as well as our retained earnings now our common stock over here as we can see our total is six thousand dollars we're going to go ahead and put six thousand dollars there and our retained earnings is the ending retained earnings calculated here so that's three thousand seven hundred and ninety three thousand seven hundred and ninety and then we'll calculate our total equity just to you know cover all of our bases um, so we'll take the sum of the two numbers that we have. We've got 9,790. And now take our total liabilities and equity. And that will be equal to the sum of our liabilities plus the sum of our equity. There we go. Okay, so we've got 14,100 on both sides balance. And that means that everything is done correctly and at this point it also means we are done with this particular question let's cross check the numbers here so ending expenses are 4460 according to the book let's check out our ending expenses 4460 we're spot on over there net income is 3440 our net income was 3440 correct so far and total assets are 14100 and our total assets are 14100 thank you so much for watching and um Looking forward to working with you some more. Thank you. Bye.